All right. We are in our series, How to Be. And um, I just, I love that. It's just so simple. We're not having to worry about how to do or what, no, just how to be. How to be with God. And what does that mean? And, and all the different aspects that he has for us. So today, I am focusing on unity. And um, how it is really more, you know, important than ever. And uh, let's just, just dive right in here. I'm going to move over a little bit because... <laughs> cheat and just put my notes right on the, on the screen. There we go. So you might say, okay, unity, okay, well, what's the big deal about unity? Okay, we, we know it's important, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, when I was putting, you know, just starting to think about, you know, I was, I'm going to be preaching again, I'm on the rotation. And, and, and this came to me early on about God told me I, I wanted to talk about unity. Okay. Um, definitely some issues with that, you know, the body of Christ. But I really just began to sense um, that he was like really serious about this and that there was something really important about it. Not because I'm doing the message or what I'm coming up with, but it was just, I, I don't know, I just sensed a real urgency with him on it. That it's just something we need to be paying attention to we need to grab hold of, we need to take this seriously and and not just let it be, you know, a nice little Sunday sermon that just, you know, goes in, goes out, all right, now I'm on to, you know, my work week. But to really be paying attention, be receptive, and grab hold of it. And, and, and I'm not just saying this to you, you know, I'm saying this to me. Those of you that know me, you know, God always usually has me preach on things that he's, that he's talking to me about, that he's working with me on. So, you know, I kept, when I was working on this, I kept thinking about, you know, all of you. And he, he would just bring it back around to me. He says, no, this is for you too. You need to see how important this is. You need to grab hold of this. You're part of this. So I'm in this with you, okay, as we take this journey together today. And one way I knew that, oh, there was something up with this, was Friday night, I got a text uh, from Brenda Osmus, who was uh, going out to take the kids for the donuts. Um, <laughs> and, and she just texted me out of the blue and says, I'm praying for you for your, for your sermon on Sunday. I'm like, well, that's really nice. Nobody's, you know, I never normally get, you know, things like that before I preach something. Well, how nice of her. And I, you know, text her back, thank you. And told her I was praying for her and the youth today. And then Saturday morning, I got a text from Amy Quicksaw. I'm praying for you for your sermon. Well, okay, then I knew, okay, something's up. You know, this is, again, God was hammering in, you know, home into my brain. I'm telling you, this is really important. And if my people can really grab hold of this, there's no telling what can happen in terms of advancing the kingdom of God. And even this morning, you know, Amy, and, and Brad, they felt led to pray for me. And that, that normally does not happen. I just feel led to pray for you. So just as, as we go through this today, just be open. Be receptive. Ask God to show you, all right, God, what are you trying to tell me today? And just hear directly from him. And it's kind of funny, you know, the last time I got up here and spoke, I was on the, um, you know, we were talking about, uh, the armor of God, and mine was the, the you know, the helmet of salvation. And I don't know if you remember, but I, that was that sermon I had such a hard time on. And I was like, like up almost to the end, I was kind of panicking, and what am I going to talk about? It's not coming together. I can't, you know. And this sermon was totally, it was the exact opposite. It was like everything just kept like he was like, like having a butler come up to me and with, with my material on a silver tray. Here you go, Miss Butler. <laughs> you know, uh, and I've got this, and it was like coming at me. From everywhere. And so I had this running joke with God that, you know, oh, I see whining pays off. So, you know, because I whined like incessantly that <laughs> the process of that last sermon. You know, I said, oh, you just don't want to listen to my whining. So you're just making sure that you just hand all this stuff to me. 
And so that was that's our little joke. But finally, you know, I, it was Saturday, it was yesterday, I had my dumb moment, and I realized, you know, okay, well, that was, he, I'm sure he was joking with me because he and I like to clown around like that. But I just began to realize, no, wait a minute, everybody's talking about this. You know, because I'm, I'm seeing it here, I'm seeing it here, um, I'm, you know, there. Even last night, I don't have this, you know, in my material, but even last night, we got a text from, or an email from Jeff, uh, the pastor that we're working with, um, uh, as a lead team in terms of, you know, how we're going to be going forward in, in the church and everything. And, and um, he sent us this thing from Christianity Today about, um, you know, how the church, you know, how, how do we approach unity in the church, basically, was what the article is about. And it started off with this, this remark about, you know, the people in the church are tearing each other apart and what do we do? And, and so, of course, you're thinking it's a modern church pastor saying that, and it was Clemens. Uh, uh, who was one of the early church uh, leaders who was talking about they were decisive and they were tearing each other apart. What do we do? And so I thought, there's yet another one. So it's like, it's everywhere that, you know, that, I'm, that I'm seeing these words about unity. So that just let me know that, okay, God, we, we, we're starting to hear you. You're, 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 you're getting your word out. So... Here we are at Springs Vineyard. We're ready. We're ready, Lord, to talk about this with you. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, what does unity mean and or not mean? And let me show you this, talk about this phrase here. You don't get harmony when everyone sings the same note by Doug Ford. And let me tell you where I, I even saw that. So... At work, I, those of you that know me, I work in uh, dialysis, and every now and then they throw little trinkets at us to try to appease us and keep us working there. <laughs> and so they had, a, a few months ago, they'd given us these little cup, like coffee cups with, with candles in them, and oh, that's nice, I just threw it on the desk, and you know, I never looked at it that much. And the other day, I was walking by the dietician's desk, and she had the same cup. And I noticed there was something written on there, and it was this phrase. And I went, oh my gosh, this is, this is part of, you know, what God's trying to tell me. That, you know, that unity, this is part of what unity means. So when, you, when, we, when we think about unity, what we're talking about is it's, it's when we're going in the same direction. Now, we might, you know, use different ways to get there and different methods, but we're still... We have an ultimate goal, don't we? Our ultimate goal really is our relationship with the Lord and then sharing that with the world, isn't it? The Great Commission. That's the direction we're all heading in, or should be, when we're in unity. And so it's the same destination. But it doesn't mean that, you know, we're in absolute, total agreement. Because are we? No, no. And just like that, that saying says, you don't get harmony when everybody sings the same note. And so if we're all like, you know, like little robots and all, you know, where's the, where's the creativity? Where's, you know, God working with this person to pull it off this way and that person? And where's the gifts of the spirit? No, he, he's, he's made us different but to all be, to come together and use all that we have to create that whole, to create that unity. It's also not where, you know, unity is, does not mean that you, you can't admit that, that things are wrong or that there's something not right and that you're disloyal. No, we, the Bible's very clear that we, when we sense that things are wrong or not, or, or not going the way that they're supposed to, we need to speak up because those are the kind of things that can get us off track. And we might not end up at the destination that God has for us. And another thing, it's not, unity does not mean that we have to rubber stamp um, everything that goes on, our, especially in our leadership. Um, you know, I've, I've seen churches where you've got, you know, lead, leadership in place and they're just kind of rubber stamping you know, whatever, let's say, the pastor says. And that is not what unity is all about. Unity is, is, is speaking the truth and, 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 and 
coming up with the things that that, the, that our partners would be, so that that again we can create that that unified whole that God wants us to be. So again, just just the bottom line here is that we don't all have to look alike, or be alike, or sing alike, or speak alike to have unity. We just need to come together and know we're this you know we're this body or we're part of this region or we're part of the whole body of Christ. But, but what's our destination? You know, think of an army. If an army doesn't know its destination. It's not going to be able to show up for the battle, is it? And fight the war, and maybe win the war. And so we have to think about we're, we're an army, and we have to work together. We have to come together as a whole. But we, but but it's made up of different parts. And so don't worry that okay, I'm not I'm not functioning, you know, like that part of the army is. Or how come I'm like just a corporal and they're a lieutenant? Don't worry about all of that. Just play the part that God has given you to play and just keep in march, marching along with your fellow soldiers. And when you do that, you're gonna end up in that destination, in that unified whole that God is calling us to. And so what I wanna do today is I wanna talk about unity in terms of, of us as individuals, in a congregation, regionally, in the whole body of Christ. And what I've done is I've, I've, I'm, I'm going to show you the actual material that God just like really just basically handed to me time and time again to bring about you know, what he's trying to tell us today. So the first thing that I got was um, this newsletter from uh, a pastor I know, um, Reverend John Jenkins. And he sends out, he is part of the Four Square Church. And he travels around for them and speaking in different churches. And I'm on his mailing list. And I got, you know, he also sends out a calendar and his, and his, his newsletter. And so how do I know this, you know, how do I know this guy? Well, uh, when I was still married at the time, my husband and I, we were living in uh, Lakeland, Florida. And we ended up in uh, John's uh, Foursquare Church that he was pastoring at the time in Tampa. And the first day that we walked in to his church, he did, he did not know us. He had never seen us. And he prophesied over us. And I tell you, it, it was so accurate, and it nailed us to the wall so firmly that, that we were shaken. We were, we were almost scared. It was like, whoa. And so we have, you know, I've since then, you know, we've had this ongoing relationship with, with John and Helen. And... Um, and so they're very, I, they, this is somebody that I really know and really trust. Otherwise, I just wouldn't be, you know, sharing, you know, just anybody's material with you. But his newsletter for the month of March was called Staying Connected to Your Life Support. And he was talking about that we as individuals, if we're not in unity with the, the triune God, the Trinitarian God, that we're just not going to make it as believers. And he starts out with John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And then Acts 15, 28. He says, for in him we live and move and have our being. And he just was talking about the source and then the thing that was gathering its strength from the source. So he, he talked about, he said, you know, think about the following. When God chose to create the, the fish world, he spoke to the waters, to the source. When God decided to create the trees of the forest, he spoke to the ground. That's their source. They, that's what they grow out of. When God set his heart to create man, he spoke to himself. He said, what do you mean? You know, he says, Genesis 1, God said, let us make man in our own image according to our likeness. So he says, think about this now. If you take a fish out of the water, it's going to die, isn't it? 
If you take a tree out of the ground, what's going to happen? You're going to use it for firewood, right? It's going to be dead. And when a man or woman disconnects from God, what happens? You may be breathing in your human shell, but you know, inside, you're dying. If we, if, if we want to have real unity, the place we start is right here. If we don't stay connected to our life support, if, if we're in a hospital and, and, and you're on life support and you can't make it without that life support and they pull that life support, you're getting ready to go. And so we have to stay connected to our life support. And it says, the water without the fish is still water, right? However, the fish without the water becomes nothing. The ground is, is whether it's got trees in it or not, it's still the ground. But you pull, the, you know, but the tree without the soil, it just is not going to exist. We all know that God without man is still God. He doesn't need us, does he? He does not need us to exist at all. But without him, we're going nowhere. He says, let me, let me close with this verse in 1 Corinthians 6, 17. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. And I know you all know this stuff. I mean, this is not like big news flashes to anybody. But I just think we need to be encouraged and reminded. I, I know this is something God is really working with me on about staying connected because I'm just like so often so discombobulated. I'm working, I, you know, live with a family, trying to do some volunteer stuff, you know, and in between all of that, somewhere I'm trying to squeeze God in. And that's just, you know, that is not, that's a real tenuous connection to your life support. Being connected to your life support needs to be your number one priority. And then once you're connected to your life support, then you've got the, the time, the space, the energy to be doing all the other stuff that you need to do just to live life. But so often we are, instead of you know working our life around the life support, we're just trying to cram the life support in wherever we can. So I'm, I'm reaching for it here and get my gas. I'm reaching for it there and get my gas. That's that's pretty shaky life, right? So I really want to encourage you that this is like the, the baseline of everything we're talking about today. If we don't if we don't make it here, then all the other efforts of unity are going to be, it's all going to be shaky because it's all going to be people that are shaky on their life support. So I want to, I'm, I'm encouraging all of you and I'm encouraging me. Begin to examine how are you connected to that life support? You know, what are you doing? Uh, what's priority for you? I know that's what I'm starting to look at. What, what really interests me? Does being with God really interest me or does watching, you know, Netflix really interest me more? And those are the hard questions I'm having to, to, to answer with myself. And I loved what, um, I'm, I've been listening to the Bama series and I can't remember, it may have been a more recent one that the Wednesday night group hasn't gotten to yet, but I remember he was talking, he did this whole series about just different spiritual disciplines that you can do to, to really connect to, this, to the life support of the Lord. And he, he said, if you make a space for God, he will fill it. But you gotta make the space. And so as we go forward today, just remember, Lord, start thinking, what kind of space am I making for you? And, and how do I go about doing that? Because it's, it's different for everybody. He came up with all kinds of different ideas. He says, you don't have to do all of these. You just, you know, you and God decide what works, God, where I can really connect with you in the way that I really need to.
And let's move it up a notch and let's talk about congregations, Spring Vineyard. And as you can see, there is a quote here from our lovely Brenda Osmus uh, on March 19th, and I loved what she said. A church is a community, not an event. And boy, so let me tell you the background. So Brenda and I like to get together every now and then and hike. And boy, this, this hike was a doozy. <laughs> um, so I don't know how many of you know where Spruce Mountain is uh, over in Larkspur, if you've ever hiked it. But it's a, it's a real, you know, it's an, I don't think it's a little tall mountain, but nevertheless, it was a mountain. And so we hiked it, and it was, it, there was snow all over the place. We didn't even think about that. And so we were like literally like hiking and trudging through snow. And this hike took three hours. I thought I was going to die, actually. <laughs> um, but we made it. But I don't even know. I think we were somewhere up on the top or something. Because she and I were just, we were talking about all kinds of stuff about the church and just the body and ourselves. And, and, and she, we just, it was just one of the most important conversations that I've had uh, in a long time. And when she said this, that the church is a community, not an event. Like, man, it hit me like just right between the eyes. I think I literally stopped in my tracks because I just felt that was, that was so astounding. Because that is, I think, so often where we default. It's, you know, I gotta go to church, you know, I gotta go to the service. It's an event that we go to. No, the, the event is just the tool that God uses to keep us in community. The church is its people. It's not the service is just you know what we use, but but the church is us. And so some of the things I'm just going to talk about some of the things that she and I talked about, and it was kind of like talking about you know well how do we want to how would how do we come together in unity here as a congregation? And I and I began to think about well it's kind of like the analogy with a family. And I'm talking about a family that's, I mean, there's no such thing as a normal family, but, but one that functions pretty easily. You know, they're, they're, they're pretty healthy. They're not crazy. Or at least they're less crazy, let's put it that way. And so some of the things that, that we talked about is, you know, a, what does a family do? Well, they watch out for each other. So how many of you grew up with siblings and boy, we'd all beat up each other, right? But man, if somebody from the outside came in to try to beat up, you know, do something to my sibling, oh man, then we all banded together and it's fighting words then, right? So, you know, we may be quibbling among ourselves, but when somebody's coming after one of us, we're gonna, we're gonna watch out for each other. We're gonna pray. We're gonna be listening to the Lord. We're gonna be watching out for their needs and seeing, you know, what can we do to help in those needs? We're just going to simply care about and love each other. And, and caring about each other means, you know, it, it's more than just this surface superficial thing that we sometimes find ourselves doing with people that we're in, in church with, in our, in our community. Um, it's really digging down underneath the surface. One of the things I do at work is I teach these classes a couple of days a week and one of the things we talk about with our dialysis patients is that you cannot always go by what's happening on the surface because they can, it's amazing, they're sitting there on a dialysis machine, how well they can present, it's, it's incredible, day in and day out, smile on their face and having, you know, normal conversations and, um, but also they'll have times where they just erupt. And, and so what we're, we're talking about in the class is that you cannot always go by what's happening on the surface, you know, when they erupt. Or you can't even go by when they're sitting there with a big smile on their face. Because there's almost always stuff going on underneath the surface. And you have to dig around a little bit. You have to ask them things like, tell me more about what's going on. Um, you know, how, how are things been, and, and really want to know how things have been, really start poking and prodding. And it's amazing, like, especially when, when we're having them, you know, get hysterical with us, and uh, it's amazing 
what could really be going on. I had a patient's wife that she would regularly call us up and castigate us. You're not taking care of her husband enough and all this kind of thing. But one night I got her, you know, I was able to talk with her on the phone. And we just kept talking, we kept talking, but we finally got to what was really bothering her. Her husband was very elderly and she knew he was he was going. And he was. I mean, we, we could all see it. And um, he'd been on dialysis for a long time. And she had been worked so hard and was so controlled, controlling over every little aspect of his care. And she was in a panic because she, she said, I don't, if he's, you know, if he's dying, I don't, I don't, I need to know what to do. I need somebody to give me answers. She couldn't fathom, you know, trying to face that, that death event and not really know all the answers, which of course we really couldn't give her. But you could, but on the surface, it looked like she's just this angry lady that just loves to, you know, call and yell at us. But really underneath, she was this terrified, lonely person, desperately trying to, you know, keep her husband with her as long as she could, because they've been married for like 57 years. And she was terrified at the thought of losing him. So that's what I'm talking about. This is the kind of care and love I'm talking about, where you're, you're willing to get down and dirty with each other. You're willing to really get to know each other. And not just in a superficial way, but in a real way. And to really care, to really begin to use that empathy that God gives us. What's it like to be you in this place? And what can I do to at least encourage you, if not make it better? In a family, you all have, we all have roles to play, don't we? And if we don't play our roles, families can fall apart. They're not very unified, are they? When the, when, and that's what, again, go back to dialysis. We often see uh, families are a casualty of dialysis because the roles get all messed up. The breadwinner is suddenly on dialysis and can't work anymore. Who's, you know, who's going to fill that role? Oh my gosh, family's going to fall apart. Um, you know, the mom might be on dialysis and she was like the glue that held everybody together, a whole extended family. And now she can't do that anymore and everybody's scrambling. And how do we fill that back in? So if you think your part that you play as part of this process of being a, a, a unified community is worthless or it's not important or why not, you know, why am I not playing that role? Try not playing it for a while and see what happens. We'll notice. It may take us a while, but I, trust me, we'll notice. When the gaps are there, you're going to notice. we got to have appropriate boundaries with each other. We can't be, you know, when somebody sets a line that says, you know, I'm uncomfortable with this or I can't handle this, we can't try to shove our way across those boundaries. We have to respect where people are at. And we may see like, wow, you really desperately need da-da-da-da-da, but they, not, they may not be ready for that. And so you have to respect their boundary. And because this, if you think about it, God respects our boundaries, doesn't he? You know, when we're not walking along with him like we need to, or we're not hooked up to that life support, he doesn't come like charging in like the Calvary necessarily and, and just like get up in our face and say, hey, you know, you need to be hooking up with me. You're not doing the right, no. He's always gentle and he's kind and he meets us where we're at, doesn't he? And that's how we need to be with each other. We can't, you know, we don't need to be saviors. We've already got one. We just need to be his instruments and his tools. And we need to do just like Jesus said. He says, I only do what I see my father doing. And I only say what's telling me to say. So that's what, you know, that's what I mean when I say boundaries. Be cognizant of, you know, what is God telling you to do? Is he telling you to go meet that need? I mean, you know, you see a need, you want to go rushing over there and meet that need, but has God told you to? And I'm, I'm very guilty of that. I'm, I'm one of those people that loves to, you know, go meet the need. I've got the gift of service, so I love it. And he's had to really work with me on, hey, you know, um, if you go rushing in there, meeting the need, and stroking your own ego, then you've messed up a plan that I've had where I've got, you know, so-and-so, he's got a plan. And so 
we have to wait and, and let him lead us on, on, on how to, you know, have these appropriate boundaries with each other. And like a family, in a family, it's not just about me in the family, is it? Now, I have, you know, I'm, I'm part of it. I have an important role to play. But the family is not just about me. It's about the family. And so as part of unity, we have to get our eyes, you know, off of just us and look around and realize that, that we're all in it together. It's not just me. It's all of us. Now, me is important, but me is not, you know, the most important. It's, it's, it's all of us together that, that creates that, that family. So here's some questions to ask. And they're not meant to be accusatory or anything like that. And in fact, you know, I thought, you know, when I was looking at them, it was like, oh boy, you know, start to feel bad, start to, mm. and, and the Lord said, wait, you know, don't, don't let the enemy deceive you with this, this kind of thing and lead you down the path of feeling shame and you're disgraced, you're horrible, you never do anything right. Slow. He says, all, all you're doing with questions like this is a simple evaluation. It doesn't, doesn't that mean when you, when you hear the word, oh, I'm just evaluating myself. No, I'm not, I'm not castigating myself. I'm not, you know, shaming myself. Doesn't that feel better just to say, hey, I'm just evaluating myself along with God. So as, I, as we go through these, don't, don't fall into shame. Don't let the enemy lead you there. Just say, okay, God, let's, let's do the checkoff list here. Are there things here that you're showing me I need to, to repent of? And what does repent mean? Does it mean fall on the ground and flop at the mouth and beat yourself up? And Not in my world. All repent means is just um, God's tapping on the shoulder. Hey, Julie, you're going the wrong direction. Come around. That's really all it is. No drama needed. You know, you don't need to hate yourself. You just need to go, oh, okay. And then you just made the decision, am I going to turn around? And am I going, am I going to go in the direction he's pointing me in? So, you know, things to think about as a family here in our congregation. is What, what can we do to, to, to really operate as that family and to be, you know, functioning the way we need to be? And these are the, some of the things that, that Brenda and I talked about. You know, are we... How self-absorbed are we? And to some extent, we're all self-absorbed. I mean, to some extent, you need to be at least a little self-absorbed or you can't, you know, you can't function. You have to take care of yourself. You have to be aware of yourself. But again, like I said before, it's, it doesn't have to be all about me all the time. I need to get my eyes off of myself onto the rest of you. And trust me, I love being in that place. I'm an extreme introvert. And I love being in that place where my eyes are all on myself. And I'm, I'm just all safe and sound, and I don't have to worry about anybody else. I love it here. And so I have to, you know, I have to unglue my eyes from myself and, and, and let God help me start looking around. All right, who needs, who needs something at this time, and what is God telling me? Are we doing Sunday drive-bys? And Brenda and I were talking about, you know, I remember him saying, um, you know, people come up to you on Sunday, are, are people coming up to you on Sunday and giving you, you know, some little superficial, you know, word and a little superficial prayer, and then they never think about you again for the rest of the week. You're just a Sunday drive-by. And boy, I know I've been guilty of that. And, and so I'm really working on, you know, I'm asking God, you know, put it into my heart. Help me to remember when someone says, you know, something to me, or I'm writing it down, whatever it takes. But help me to know, you know, that it's when, when you bring me into contact with somebody on Sunday and there's something going on where we've had a connection, I don't want to forget that. I want to pray for them. Or maybe, hey, I want to call them up and say, let's have coffee. You know, that's one thing Brenda and I are trying to do. We're trying to have connection. Uh, Amy 
Amy Tickham and I and Laura, we had our little group where we would go out and uh, we would just eat out every now and then just to have our connection. I'm gonna miss that sister. Um, it's just, you know, again, it's, it's community is, it's, it's not an event. This church is not an event. It's not just a Sunday service. It's going on. Our community is going on every day of the week. And any day of the week is an opportunity to be with our community, to serve our community, and to love our community. And these small groups, you know, I'm going to put a plug in for the small groups. Great way to really be connecting in community. Because that is one thing, you know, COVID has done. It has it just about just raised community to the ground. And now we're in the process of having to rebuild it. But I think, I think it's gonna be better than ever before. I think there was a method to the madness there. Think about how we're communicating with each other. Are we, are we talking in ways to each other that's, that's meaningful, that's thoughtful, that's encouraging? Or are we, you know, gosh, do we ever bully each other? And I'm not, I'm not saying that's going on, but these are the kind of things you gotta think about when people communicate with each other. Are we bullying each other? Are we, um, are we using humor, like sarcasm, to hide, like maybe we're angry with somebody? And because we don't wanna confront them straight out, we just use, we just, you know, hide it in our quote unquote humor. Well, I was just teasing you. I wasn't being serious. Yeah, but it like, you know, felt like a knife going on my heart when you were, you know, trying to be funny with me. Are we, you know, are we gossiping? I mean, these are the kind of things that we have to think about. How are we talking with each other? How are we communicating with each other? And, and at the end of the day, does it bring the person closer to God? Or does it, does it hurt them? And maybe think from, to themselves, I just, gosh, maybe I just want to run away. This is too hurtful. And then, are we staying in our comfort zones? Now, I tell you, I really, like I said earlier, I really struggle with that. I love my comfort zone. I just, you know, when I get out of it, I feel a little anxious, feel insecure, I feel in control of things. You know, but but that's what Jesus did the whole time he was on earth. He pushed people, he led people out of their comfort zones into the into the person that God really had planned for them. If we all just stay in our comfort zones, are we gonna grow? We'll, we'll just stay the same, won't we? Will we ever really be connecting with each other? Maybe, maybe some on a superficial level, but not on those deep levels. What about those people here in church that annoy us or we just feel uncomfortable around? Are we avoiding them? I know I've done that. And boy, I tell you, God is on my case about it. No, you need to get in there, you need to face it, you need to figure out what's going on with you emotionally, why are you, you know, why are you having that sensation, what's going on, you need to pray and then be led by him to, to deal with it. We need to get out of our comfort zones in terms of, I'm too busy to do da 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 da, but maybe God has told me about, I'm too busy to take a meal, I'm too busy to make that phone call, I'm too busy to visit them in the hospital. Um, those are the kind of comfort zones that we can find ourselves in. And if we want real unity, we've got to break free of that so we can really be our authentic selves connecting with each other. Now let's go over this next step, regional. And I'm so thrilled that you are all here with us from Royal Gorge today because the next thing that I noticed and I wasn't in here the day that Wayne Drain was here because I was back with the kids, but I heard about the word that he gave for us uh, in conjunction with Royal Gorge. 
And I don't know if y'all know about this or not. Okay. Uh, but he said, there is a call for you to walk together as sister churches, partnering with others in your region to bless your cities. And he opened it up with Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10, and then 12. He says, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. Also, if two lie down together, they will keep warm. But how can one keep warm alone? Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not easily broken. And some of the key points that he brought up in his word for, for us and to partner with Royal Gorge here was to model unity in diversity. Here we go back to, you know, unity is, is it's not just one, the same thing. It's, it's different little things making up the whole. And so they may, you know, do things differently than us. Is that something that needs to upset us? No. It just means that's how God is telling them how to do it. Do they need to get upset over how we're doing things here? Nope. They just need to know that, you know, God's calling us to work together and we're going to each bring our giftings and the things that we specialize in and the things that we're strong in and our weaknesses. We're going to just bring it all together and, and work together and uh, begin to affect this whole area. He says, work separately and together, depending on the need. So we'll, there'll be times we'll be doing our own thing, but I think there's gonna be times that we're gonna be connecting up for whatever it is that he has for us. And why are we doing this? Because we wanna get chummy with Royal Gorge? Well, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, I've been to their church, they're fun people. <laughs> so yes, that might be part of it, but the main reason is, he says, we're doing this to bless our region in big and small ways. You know, this whole idea of working together is so foreign to us as Americans because we are so individualistic and um, we always think of just doing it on our own, you know, pull myself up by my own bootstraps and do it myself. And that is not God's way at all. God has been very plain in the Bible that community is what it's all about. And that's how you pull it off. And so, um, one of the things that we, as you know, the lead team, have been feeling is that we've been, as a church, we've been too isolated, and that it's time to start really connecting up, you know, with with um, other, at least other vineyard churches in our area. So we're starting to take steps of, you know, here they are today, helping us out, you know, partnering with us and doing this this wonderful worship service that they did, and we're you know going up to Denver and some of the other regional uh, meetings and stuff. Uh, uh, Josh and Sarah are doing that. So we're starting to, you know, not be an island anymore, but okay, we're, we've got all these, at least, like I said, at least other vineyard churches around that we can partner with and start to make an even greater impact than just our church alone can make. And, and Wayne, he, he ended it up with, you know, Ephesians 4, 3, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace in Psalms 133, 1 and 3b, how good and pleasant it is when God's people live together in unity. For there the Lord bestows his blessings, even life evermore. And I really feel that as we begin to, to make these connections and forge them and see how God's going to build them and what he's going to do with them, there's, there's, there's going to be a great impact on our region, on, on, the, on the southern Colorado region, not just Colorado Springs, but down there in Canyon City, all of those areas down there. So I don't think you're here, you know, by coincidence today. I think God meant you to be here to be a picture of, look, we've got to get our eyes off of ourselves, we've got to get our, our eyes just off of our own little church, and we've got to start looking out. Who else is part of the army around us and work in conjunction with them? Because if army divisions and battalions and stuff, they're all on their own and they don't connect with each other, it's not a very good army, is it? It doesn't function very well. They're normally not going to win a war. So let's finish it up with the body of Christ. And this I got from listening to a video by Jay Pathak, who is the head of Vineyard USA. He was doing a video about the Anaheim Church um, wanting to disassociate with Vineyard, and I want to get into all of that. But part of what he said in that vineyard, uh, that video really struck me. He says, the vineyard 
has a massive connection to the whole body of Christ. We've really been weighing our large responsibility to the larger body of Christ as a whole. What does it mean for us to be a part of the body of Christ, to care for the whole body of Christ in these issues and considerations? And he even talked about how, you know, this is pretty hard. This whole thing, you know, with the Anaheim thing was, was a really, you know, I'm sure that was like came out of the blue, it really shocked them all, and they were all grappling with it. And, you know, and he talked about in this video how he was getting calls from all around the world from um, uh, people from different denominations and groups. They weren't, they weren't all vineyard people, but they were other uh, denominations calling him, encouraging him. We're praying for you and just talking to him and just reaching out to him. And that is what unity is all about with the body of Christ. It's, it's knowing that it's not, just, it's not just us, it's them too, it's all of us. And that we can't just be, you know, taking care of our own little group. We've got to think about, you know, how are we connected to the body of Christ? How do we operate with them? How do we love them? How do we cooperate with them so that we pull off this great commission that God has called us to? You know, when you think about a human body, the human body is held together, isn't it? It's got ligaments and muscles and bone structure and... And, you know, if all of that begins to fail it, and, and a body just, like, if my arms start falling off or my legs start falling off because, you know, my ligaments and stuff aren't working anymore, it's not going to be much of a body anymore, is it? It's not going to be, it's not going to be unified. And so, you know, if we're trying to keep ourselves disconnected all the time from the body of Christ, from the body of Christ because of, you know, whatever, it's not going to function very well. It's going to, it's going to be in pieces. So we've got, you know, I think through the years, from what I've seen, we, we, we almost look on the other parts of the body of Christ as some kind of, it's like it's some kind of competition. You know, we want people to come to our church, not your church, because we want to grow in numbers or whatever. And we're not, we're not looking on them as, you know, our companions, and we're all in this war together, but we but literally have seen them as, you know, like, well, you know, that's, that's not us, so, you know, we can't connect with them. But they're all part of the body of Christ. And we just have to trust God, you know, he'll do in our church what he wants to do. But we can't look at, you know, other churches or other, you know, regions or whatever or other denominations and, and be in this, this competition mode of if we're right, you're wrong, we're going to outdo you, we're going to get more people in. No. We have to rejoice whenever any of us in the body of Christ pulls off a victory. Because it's, it, that means it's our victory too. And, and we've got to get out of this mindset that, you know, um, we're the only ones that are right and everybody else is wrong. And I don't think people here really feel that way, but that has been common in the body of Christ. Um, you know, it's our, our doctrine's right, your doctrine's wrong. And here's what the Word of God says, 1 John 4, 15, if anyone acknowledges the Son of God, God lives in them, and they in God. And that's what I'm looking for. I don't care what church you go to. Are you in God, and is God in you? Well, if so, then we we're brothers or sisters. We are part of the same body. Now, gosh, do I always agree with how you're getting to the destination? No, I don't. But I'm not going to cut you off because I don't agree with every little doctrine that you, that you have. And I hope you don't cut me off because you don't agree with all my doctrines. You know? uh, this is why the enemy... He uses this stuff to slice and dice us, you know, because he knows that it's, 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 it's going to tear us apart and that, that, he, that body is just going to be in pieces. And so John 17, 20 through 21 says, my prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you sent me. So you can see in there, it's like, 
Okay, it's vertical and it's horizontal. Unity is vertical between, between us, congregations, the body of Christ, between us and God. We're all one with them and we're all one with each other. Why? So that the world may believe. So let me finish up. I've kind of gone over a little bit today. And I know it was, it was kind of disjointed today, but, but again, just, you know, be receptive. Ask God, okay, God, what are you telling me? And so as we finish up, why is unity important? I, I really feel like from individuals on up, it's secret swim time. We need God's unity to survive more than ever. Um, We've been through, I think, a big sh shaking and shifting. And I think COVID was, I don't think God necessarily said COVID, um, but I think he uses stuff to his advantage. And I think, he, but I think even without COVID, I think he was already shifting and shaking. I, I felt that even before COVID, that he was like really rattling the cage. And, and so, to get to the baseline, to get to the core, to get to the foundation. And I know that right now that we as a body, we're, we're in that, you know, the ugly T word, transition. We don't like that, do we? It's scary, it's uncomfortable. I don't know how things are gonna turn out. Are we gonna make it through this? And boy, it can you can really get into a, you know, every man for himself kind of mentality. I'm gonna watch out for myself. And, I'm going to see what I'm going to do. And this transition more than ever is when you need to grab hold of everybody because they're your life support. They're your, they're, I'm sorry, they're your life jacket, so to speak. You need to grab hold of those around you and go through that transition together because it's, it's, it's just too difficult. You, you could easily become a casualty in transition. You don't really grab hold of, of the people that God has put around you. Unity brings empowerment. And again, this is what I was talking about with, with Satan. He knows it does. That's, again, that is why he is so intent on just ripping us to shreds and, and tearing us apart from each other. Because he knows that when we get together and we're heading to that same destination using, you know, that, that beauty of diversity that we have to do it with, he knows that they're, they're usually, they're, you know, when God's in something like that, and the people are cooperating, there's pretty much nothing that can stop it except tearing it apart. And think about the Tower of Babel. What happened with that? The people all got together and they were building this tower and God said, oh my heavens, we've got to get down there and do something. They're all of one mind. And, and there's no telling what they're going to do because they're all pulling together and that, that, that unified empowerment was, was, was working he says, there's no telling what they're going to end up with. Probably some disaster. And so he went and he, you know, did the different languages and, and broke them all apart. So they would stop from, you know, going to a destination they didn't need to go. But he knew the power of unity. And in the book of Acts, there's time and time again where it talks about they come together, they, they would pray, they'd be in unity, and these miracles would happen. The, you know, the building would shake where they were at. Unity means power. And if we're not empowered, in an army that's not empowered, it doesn't get very far, does it? We need unity. We need each other to have that multiplied power to begin to make an impact here and out there. What I saw yesterday to finish up, the Lord spoke to me. He says, the unity here, when, when, you're, when you really get to come together here, you know, or whatever level we're operating on. When you start really coming together and have that unity, and that empower, and you start powering up, the unity um, is the launch pad that, that sets you on out into that, into that world. And it's just, if you don't think that the world's not watching, better take a, better take a second thought to that. They're watching us. And when they see us tearing each other apart and criticizing each other 
or criticizing them um, because you know they're not thinking like we are. You know, it's going to drive them away. Unity is 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 what's going to be that muscle that we need when we get out there. Because if we're out there just flailing around trying to do our own thing, we might do a little bit, but when we get out there together and we show them what the what the what the the unity of God does and how it changes lives and how it makes an impact, some of them are going to want to be a part of that. And I did miss one here. I said, you know, unity provides protection. When we're out there, we need protection because, you know, Satan's not going to just like roll over. No, man. When we're out there like that, he's going. He's he's the war. He's the one we're at war with. So he's going to be attacking. And when we're in unity, unity can bring protection. I'm I'm, I'm reminded of the the picture that you see where the animals will they'll hurt the herds where they'll they'll put their young and they're disabled and they're old in the middle and they circle around them and they protect them and that's that's what unity what we need to do with our unity we need to know who are the strong ones who are the weak ones and how do we need to formulate and, and so that every that we protect each other as, as good as we can so that when we're launched out there we're going to make an impact